All right. Okay, sir, what's the uh, next step in the checklist? Wait for clutch light out. So the clutch light turned down. Circuit breakers in. Check the circuit breakers, they're all in. Warm up RPM. Okay, I'm gonna run up to 60 to 70. For the check. So warm up RPM, 60 to 70. And I just, I just use the throttle to do that a little bit. Okay, okay uh, engine gauges. Okay, waiting for these to warm up, which actually they're already warm. So okay. before we do anything else, we're gonna get the weather. Temperature 27, dew point 15, altimeter 3022, visual approach, runway 32 in use, advise on initial contact, you have information, Romeo. Ithaca Tower information, Romeo, 1656 Zulu, wind 3104, visibility 10, sky condition 4500 scattered, temperature 27, dew point 15, altimeter 3022. Alright. What's that? Is that what he was just referring to? He was, uh, so 3022, yeah, that yep. was for that, yep. Okay, the other thing we can do is check power. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. So, all right, so we got the weather. Uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and check power. So we'll, we'll come back to the checklist in a minute. So on the back, we got some charts. Okay, so the temperature outside air temperature is 32 degrees. We'll use 30 degrees at 2,000 feet. So power is 22.5 inches of manifold pressure. So that's that gauge there. So 22.5. And our five minute limit, our takeoff power, is added 2.8 inches. So it's going to be 25.3 inches for takeoff power. Okay. Our speed limit, so our never speed to get a uh, retreating blade stall. It's going to be 2,000, it's going to be 30 degrees at 2,000, so 127 knots is our speed limit. We're not even going to go close to that today. We'll probably be around 70, 80 knots all Okay, time. so that's our top limit. Yeah, exactly. All right, you can go ahead and flip it over. We've got our... Okay. Uh, mag drop at 75% RPM. Okay, so we got to wait. So it says engine gauge is green, then mag drop. And so we said the engine gauge is green, now we're going to do the mag drop. So feel the throttle with me. I'm going to roll it up to 75%. So I'm rolling it up, rolling it up, rolling it up. All right, so at 75%, now we can check the mag drops. I'm going to check this mag, and it's no more than 7% in uh, two seconds. That's hardly a drop, so that's good. Next step. Uh, spread cost check. Yeah, so what we're checking is that we can auto-rotate, so we're going to roll up the throttle, and when we hit about 90, we're going to quickly roll it off. Do you see the needle split? Yep. So that means the engine was not powering the rotors anymore. So that tells us that that spread clutch worked. So that's what we want to see. All right, next up. Doors. Okay. Doors. Closed, locked. Yep. yep. And in the back. Just check yours. Okay. Next up. Uh, limit MAP chart. That was, we just checked that. Check, okay. Uh, cyclic collective friction. Okay, so that's coming off here. Oops. So. Um, I have the controls. You have the you checklist. You have the controls. Okay. All right. So frictions are off. So now we're going to check the hydraulics. And I want you to feel right now with me here. You feel how light those controls are? Yes. Okay. That's way too much movement. I want gentle two finger movements. Yeah. That's that's enough movement that will give us you know really big turns. So okay. it's very, very gentle. Very gentle. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to turn the hydraulics off. So turn that off. Okay. Now I want you to feel how there's a little bit of friction there. All right. Okay, good. Okay. We're going to turn it back on, make sure the high dogs re-engages. Okay, that's good. All right. Now you have the controls, so hold them in place. I have the controls. You have the controls. All right, so keep it centered. Nope, nope, center. Oop. There you go. We're kind of fighting each other there. All right, good. And now put the friction back on. All right, and we're going to roll it up so we can get the AC going. So it says the governor needs to come on. So I just turned the governor switch on. Okay. Warning lights, out. All right, so see, I rolled up the throttle. The governor took the controls. Now we're gonna get some AC blasting. Okay. Woo! <laughs> and then uh, lift collector, slightly reduce RPM. Okay, so we're gonna take the frictions back off of this. So I have the controls. You have the controls. All right, so I'm gonna pull up on the collective a little bit. And I'm gonna reduce the RPMs. And we've got our tone, that's as expected. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna put these frictions back on just momentarily to help us out. 
All right. And so we got the warning lights, and we got the horn and light at 97%. Perfect. So we can go ahead and put this under our seat. I'll just put it under my side. Frictions are on, so we're, we're just fine doing this. I'm going to try my Bluetooth one more time, see if I can get it to work. I don't know why that is so weird. It's always on Touching. the side, too. Very strange. Okay. Um, you've got vents above you if you need to move the Good. air conditioner. Cool. All right, sir. Get ready to rock and roll. I'm ready. So frictions are off. We're going to call up the tower and ask uh, permission to taxi over to the taxiway there. And then we're going to get our clearance to take off and uh, take off to the east like we talked about. Okay. Uh, so when we when we pick up, and uh, you can just sort of watch this initial part here. When we pick up, it's a two-stage pickup. Uh, we're going to sort of get light on the skids, and then we're going to smoothly increase to come up. And then I'm using all my controls at once to sort of balance this in, that, in the hover. So we're going to call ground first here, and... Hit the ground, good afternoon, helicopter 4480 hotel with Romeo on the ramp, request taxi to Alpha at Echo. 4480 hotel, hover taxi, Alpha Echo intersection, contact tower when you're ready. Taxi, Alpha at Echo, contact tower, it's your hotel. Alright, so we'll go ahead and a uh, little bit of power. Notice I'm adding a little bit of left pedal already. Start sliding on over. So do you see on your cyclic stick, do you see a little uh, button that says freak? on your cyclic stick? Yes. Okay, go ahead and press the freak button. Good. All right, so you just switched us up to the tower. All right. So we don't really use the runways because we're not an airplane. So we're gonna take off from this taxiway. Or get our speed up. That keeps uh, keeps our energy state up in case we need it to do an emergency landing. Ithaca Tower helicopter four four eight zero hotel and Alpha at Echo ready for takeoff. Uh, request maneuvering a thousand feet below in your eastern sector near the eastern edge of the delta. Helicopter four four eight zero hotel Alpha at Echo cleared for takeoff. Transition to the east and report uh, you, when you'd like to return. Roger, clear for takeoff, Alpha at Echo, and uh, transition to the eastern sector, Ace Hotel. All right, so I'm going to add some power and a little forward cyclic, just a tad. And notice the aircraft wanted to take off on me right away. That's pretty much because we had all that wind. There's a, probably a good 10 knots of wind helping us out. I'm using some pedal to keep the nose aligned. It's a kind of a coordination exercise. I've got my left hand, right, right. my left hand, my feet, and then my right hand. You're just giving it some slight left pedal? Yep. Actually, right now I'm giving some right pedal, and that's because as we get airspeed, we get streamlined into the wind. That uh, the uh, the surfaces in the back that I showed you, those fins, are helping us keep aligned. All right, right turn. We're cleared right, so we always clear our turns. And I can't tell on that camera, does it look like it's running? The, uh, you see the numbers, the digits? I can't really see it okay. clear. It <laughs> looks think, like it. I think it is, yep. 
certainly hope so. <laughs> Otherwise, I owe you some videos, huh? I've got a whole bunch of uh, Hero 3 backs things. I'll, I'll give them to you. Cool. All right. So you notice this, this string right here, that little orange string? I noticed that when we did the check. That's called a trim string. And what that does is it basically tells us our angle into the wind. And we always want it lined up. That gives us a good drag profile. So we use our feet to do that. So I'm going to let you help me with that. Okay, I'm going to put the aircraft out of trim. So you're going to feel me push on the right pedal. See what the string is doing? It's going yep. to the right. So I said we wanted to keep it straight, right? So what would we do to correct that and make it go, to, go straight? Left pedal. All right, so go ahead and give me a little left pedal. Okay. Good. And you, if, you, if you overshot it, you could always bring it back with a little right pedal, too. Good. So at all times, while we're flying, we're going to keep that string, what we call trimmed trim. up. Yep. Yeah, in trim, exactly. And I think they have something similar on sailplanes, too. So I want you to take note on our manifold pressure gauge. How much power are we pulling right now? Uh, 18 and a half. Yeah, so 18 and a half, 19 inches, something like that. And we're going about 55 knots right now. We can accelerate a little bit, I guess. So we'll go ahead and speed up. So what I'll do is I'll point out once we're on the ground in a hover, I'll point out that we'll have a higher power. You can sort of see that relationship again. All right, so I want you with me on the collective. You can use your left hand to help me on the collective. Okay. There you go. And your feet are going to keep us in trim at all times, all right, while we're doing this. So we're going to start a climb. Right now we're at uh, 2,300 feet. We're going to go to 2,600. So let's start a climb by pulling some collective. You're going to use that V shape with your hand so we're not death gripping the throttle. Yep. Pull up a little bit. Good. All right, that's plenty. So notice we're climbing? Yep. All right. And then we're going to go back down, we're going to descend down to 2,000 feet. So go ahead and give me a descent. Push it down slowly, slowly, slowly. You're using that V shape with your hand again. There you go. Good. So we've got a, uh, a little descent going. All right, you can, and you can uh, stop pushing down. We don't okay. need to go that much. All right. Or just a little bit. We're just going to continue descending down to 2,000 feet. So you can leave the collective where it is. We're already established in a descent. Okay. So you could let go, for example, let go of the collective, and you see we're still descending at about 600 feet per minute. And once we get to 2,000 feet, we'll go ahead and level off by adding some collective, so we'll pull it back up in a little bit. Actually, we'll probably level off here at 2,200 feet. It's probably pretty good. So go ahead and pull in some collective until that needle is level with the zero. There, that's enough. Oh, we can add in some more because we're still descending a yeah, little bit. Yeah, I see that. There you go. Good correction. Good job. reason for that, I'm doing a terrible job keeping our... Uh, our airspeed up. And one thing that's not helping is our trim condition. So if we trim us ourselves up, that'll help our drag profile. There you go. See, we got an instant about five, five knots of speed back from that. Got it. Okay, now we're in a climb, so let's go ahead and correct for that. How do we correct, correct for a climb? Down. Yeah, so push down on the collective. Good. Good correction. Alright, let's see what that gets us. 
we're going to make, a, we call this control and performance. So you make one correction and then you see what that gets you. And then if you need to refine it, then we refine it. There you go. Good. I see what you're doing. So we'll probably leave it there. Okay. Probably plenty. Pretty close to level, right? So now we're not really climbing nor descending. We're in straight level flight. How do you feel? Good. All right. So we're just going to sort of hang out here for a little while and keep working on all that stuff. Keep the aircraft in trim. I see what you mean? The corrections are very subtle. They're very subtle. Very small movements. Good. Good, good input. Okay, little left pedal, keep us in trim. There we go. Little left pedal, little left pedal. Left pedal, left. Oh, there you go. All right, that's about enough, enough pedal. Yeah, sort of keep it where it's at there. All right, so we're gonna start a right turn. I want you on the controls with me, so just shadow me. On the right. controls. And I want you to see, and you're on the controls with me. We're, uh, we're just doing a shallow right turn. We're gonna try and keep our altitude about the same where it is. Just feel what I'm doing. So these are very small inputs. I pushed forward a little bit on the cyclic just so we can keep our airspeed up. So do you see where our airspeed is, where it says 60, about 65 knots right now? That green gauge yep, over there? Yep. All right, good. So we want to keep that anywhere between 60 and 70 is acceptable to me. So now we're in a we're level flight. So we're going to go ahead and continue our right turn. So you're going to feel it with me as I make a right input. A little slow, so I'm going to correct by adding some airspeed, putting a little forward cyclic. Very subtle moments, motions. Good job, Mike. You're doing helicopter stuff. Yeah, I'm enjoying it too. <laughs> Good. Sometimes people get so bogged down and like, oh man, I gotta keep stay on altitude, and they forget to just enjoy it and have fun. Well, it's a lot to think about, but it sure yes. is. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, taking the view. All right, so I want you to be uh, a little bit more deliberate on the cyclic with me, so it's going to be kind of 50-50, we'll say. Okay. All right, and you're going to give me, I got the collective, all right, so I'll take care of the altitude for you, and I just want you to give me a shallow right turn, just a little baby right turn. little more right turn. There you go. Nice. Now we're getting a little slow. I got 55 knots, so we will forward. forward. Yeah, a little forward. Just a tiny little forward. There we go. And that's going to keep us, at least it's going to mitigate our deceleration. If anything, it's going to start us to speed up a little bit. Good. 
And I want you to rest your right forearm on your thigh. Yeah. More relaxed, you know? There you go. Does that feel better? Yes. That way you can use the fine motor control of your hand and fingers instead of the gross motor control of your forearm. Gotcha. Yeah. Good. Does that feel comfortable? Yes. Okay. You're doing good. All right, we're going to start making our way back in. I have the controls. You have the controls. I have the controls. We'll give you a little break. Why don't you uh, just enjoy the view? And uh, if you want, you can shadow me on the pedals and the collective. Just sort of feel what I'm doing. Got it. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a radio call as I make my way back. And I'm going to tell the tower that I'm going to request to join a right downwind, meaning I'm going to request to join that long downwind leg that we do for right turn, so right downwind for runway 33, that's that grass strip. All right, for low approaches. Here's what it sounds like. Ithaca Tower Helicopter 448 Sierra Hotel is uh, next event. Uh, request to join a right base for low approaches to 33. I said right base, I meant right down one. Helicopter 8 Sierra Hotel, uh, roger, proceed inbound for a uh, right base runway 33. Proceed inbound for right base at 338 Hotel. So she ended up giving me a right base anyways. We'll just continue straight this way. We'll make a right turn to our final approach Dallas angle. 7427, Ithaca, ground runway 32, taxi Alpha. So, we're going to do what's called a normal approach. Okay. To start our approach, we're going to drop the collective a little bit to start our, our way down. I'm going to keep my airspeed in control with my right hand on the cyclic. And for the base leg, we're looking for about 300 feet or so. So field elevation is... Right, 300 to 200 on the right turn? Uh, yeah, well, actually, so it's 500 on the downwind, 300 on the base. And then we'll just keep 300 to start our approach down. And then, yeah, as we make our way down, we will go through 200, 100, down to zero. Um, so field elevation is 1,100 feet. So 300 above that is 1,400. So I'm going to, you know, and we'll round up for safety, 1,500, because the terrain sort of undulates around here. So 1,500 is what I'm looking for. So I'm going to start my way down. I've just got a gentle descent going on here. I'm going to control my airspeed with some forward cyclic, so I'm back up to 60. We want some airspeed because we want some of that energy in case we ever had to auto-rotate. We right. want to keep our airspeed up. 1,700, descending to 1,500. So once we're on final approach, we'll continue our, well actually, so we're going to level off for a minute on final approach, then we'll continue down by using our left hand on the collector, we'll start that descent, we'll start bringing our airspeed back with our right hand on the cyclic, and then as we get below that 55 knots we talked about, we'll start to add some power. It, do that through the throttle. What's that? You'll do that through the throttle? Actually, I'll just add it through the collective. I'll just put drag on the blades and the engine will automatically compensate. It'll compensate? Yeah. Okay. All right, so we're 60 knots here. So a normal approach angle is sort of just a happy medium. It's not too steep, not too shallow. And it looks like this. We'll put our landing point, the far white marker, we'll put it halfway up the windscreen, okay? And we're going to keep it there pretty much the whole time, and that'll maintain a good angle, good normal angle. For this one, you don't have to do anything. Just watch what I do, and if you want, shadow me on the pedals in the collective. Got it. All right, so we're 1,500 feet now. Kind of hard to make out the the white strip. It's right over there. Okay, I see both of them. See, I'm good. Yep. All right, so we're going for the far one. And we'll be ready at the end. Skyway 7427. So we're going to wait. We're going to keep our altitude until it gets halfway up the windscreen. Then we'll start our way down. That way we've got a nice glide angle the whole way down. All right, on the approach. So I drop the collective, start working my airspeed back. Okay, 
runway, starting to bring in some power. Helicopter A Sierra Hotel, runway 33, clear low approach. Clear low approach, 33, A's or Dell. We're keeping the nose in trim, so you'll notice it's kind of offset a little bit, which is, that's fine. This is, this is aerodynamic, so right. it's all good. We're going to terminate this approach to a hover, and then we'll go around and we'll try a different one. The takeoff we'll do is something called a marginal power approach. So what you'll see me do is we'll just keep one power setting, and I'm not going to move the collective from there. We'll let the aircraft sort of aerodynamically take off, and that's simulating that we don't have much power to pull. All right. So remember we were pulling about 19 or so inches of power when we were in cruise? Correct, we're down to 16 now. So down to 16, but as I start to get into my hover regime, I'm going to have to pull in a whole bunch more, right? See how it's coming back up? Yep. And left pedal because of turbulence. Good. Or yeah, drag. Keep the, uh, keep the nose aligned. All right, so how much power are we pulling now? Now we're at uh, About 20, 20, 23. 23. All right, so that's what we're going to pull, whatever we got right now. So I'm not going to I'm not gonna move the collective at all. You'll feel it stay perfectly still. And I'm just going to push forward. We've got ETL, so the clean air is pushing. Right. Helicopter ATR, hotel, make right turn, reestablish in the downwind runway 32. Right turn to the downwind, ATR Hotel. Skywest 7427, on departure flight, runway heading, runway 32, clear for takeoff. Runway heading, runway 32, clear for takeoff, Skywest 7427. That's pretty cool. Yep, so I didn't even have to do anything. The aircraft took off on its own because we had uh, clean air. 80 Hotel, you can continue your approaches to runway 33. Traffic is a CRJ2 departing runway uh, 32. Roger, continuing approach to 33, and we'll uh, keep an eye out as they depart. Ace or Dell. All right, so we're going to kind of widen the box a little bit here and give ourselves some time. That jet is about to take off from the runway. So we're a beam our landing spot right now. I noticed him coming around to taxi. Yep, they were back taxiing him down to runway 32. So there he goes. So this one is going to be a steep approach. And this is uh, simulating that we've got a little tiny postage stamp field we're trying to get in, and there's really no way to keep a normal angle. We have to do a steep, steep angle to get in. So I've got my airspeed up to 70 knots. I'm on the downwind about 1,800 feet or so. And I felt that little bump, so just out of habit, I added some aft cyclic. And you can shadow me on this one. Go ahead, grab the cyclic lightly. We're going to make a right turn, descend down to 1,500. Contact downward, departure, nap, safe flight. Departure, good day, 70. And I'm using a little right pedal to keep the keep the trim string aligned, yeah. Attention all aircraft information, Sierra is current out there to 3021. I've got to keep my speed up a little bit, some forward cyclic. Sending down. All right, so I'm going to start my a little right turn. You can help me out with that right turn. I'm going to make a little right turn. Little inputs. A little forward cyclic to keep our airspeed up. There we go. Little forward side right there. All right, so now for a steep approach, I want that white, that white thing, uh, the far white marker, to be about a third of the way down the wind, or let's say a third of the way up the window. So that'll put us on a steep approach angle. So we're not starting our approach yet. We're going to keep our altitude just drive until we get our approach angle. All right. Now it looks steeper than last time, right? Yes. All right. So we start our approach. So collective goes down. You can push down with me a little bit. Yep. Not so much. Just a little bit. Yep. And light grip on the collective. We don't want to death grip the throttle, right? There you go. We're just working our working our airspeed back. Hotel runway three three cleared low approach. Clear low approach three three. Hotel. Working our 
our airspeed back. And the nose is aligned with the lane, which is fine. Not too much wind. I'm going to start pulling in some power here so we don't get too, uh, too fast at the bottom. You feel that vibration? Yes. That's ETL. Okay, so the rotor is sort of half clean air, half dirty air, and this is pretty efficient. We're still, we've only got 17 inches pulled right now. We could ride that all the way down. So we got below ETL, and so we had the last couple inches to pull, but we had ground effect to help us too, so we didn't end up pulling that much. See, 19 inches. I have the controls. Do you have the controls? I have the controls. Good job. Yeah, do you see how now we're pulling about uh, 21, 22 inches almost in the hover? Okay. And um, so what we did, it was actually very efficient. You did a re really good job helping me out with that. We did our steep approach to this marker. We used ETL to keep the, uh, air, the air clean above the rotor system. And then as we got closer to the ground, we transitioned to ground effect, which g gave us a little bit of cushion to work with. So if this was the top of a mountain, that would have been a pretty safe approach. So cool. now, we're, now we're gonna do something called a max performance takeoff, all right? And what we're simulating is like, let's say we're taking off from a hospital in the middle of a city and there's trees and buildings and all kinds of stuff all around us. We're gonna simulate there's a 50 foot building right at that two, number two marker. And we're gonna take off vertically. Once we clear 50 feet, then we can start our way forward and get into clean air, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna pull power. You can shout at me on the collective and the pedals. Good. All right, on the go. So power comes in, little left pedal. Okay. There's the number two marker. We're not going to pass it because there's a building right in front of us. All right, now we're clear of the building. Now we can start our acceleration. And I do that with just a little bit of forward side. A little forward, yes. Yeah. As we start to get some airspeed, I can drop my power a little bit so we're not too heavy-handed on the power. You're a good instructor. Thank you. So this next one is going to be a shallow approach, okay? So notice to level off, I just drop the collective a little bit, kept our air speed up. Do me a favor, reach over the cyclic slowly and press the top button on that GoPro. died on me here. So what we'll do is uh, we can come back a couple minutes early, switch out the cameras, and just get a quick photo angle of you flying so that you have something to take home, you know what I mean? Sure. And then you'll have the audio as well. This is this part at least is recording. But I'm not sure if that shut off or if I just can't see the numbers. So but yeah, I have a it's suspicion hard to see with the sun. Yeah, I have a suspicion it did shut down, maybe uh, cook the battery or something. Or they are temperamental three two. Commuter 4995, runway 32, cleared to land. Cleared to land, runway 32, Commuter 4995. And Tower ATR Hotel is uh, right down 1 to 3 3. Helicopter 80 Hotel, Roger, hold uh, east of the field for IFR inbound. Holding east, ATR Hotel. Alright, so we've got some traffic to contend with, so we're gonna, they're gonna hold us east here, we're just gonna hang out. Do some sightseeing. What they said was they've got uh, IFR traffic inbound, and what that means is that there's an airplane or some sort of aircraft that was coming in on an IFR clearance, meaning that they're flying through weather, and so they get controlled more deliberately than they control us. So right now we're VFR, visual flight rules. IFR is instrument flight rules, meaning that they're flying in the weather. And so for visual flight rules, VFR, we can go wherever, whatever altitude I want, whatever airspeed I want, wherever I want to go, my rules. As long as I'm obeying, you know, weather clearances and so forth. Right. From IFR, 
you know, they, they're being told what to do. And so they've got sort of the traffic priority. They're going to land them first before they let us land. So will IFR always take precedence? Usually, yeah. Just because VFR traffic is more maneuverable and flexible. Okay, I see him. Do you see the glimmer over on the horizon there, about 11 o'clock? About two inches above that hill, straight ahead. Oh yeah, no, I got it. Airplane. All right, why don't you get on the uh, cyclic with me? And we're just going to do some straight level flight. Uh, give me about 60 knots. No, left hand stays level. To give me four, to, uh, to give me oh, more forward. speed. Yeah, there you go. See how we're speeding up. And if we do start to descend, you can add a little bit of collective to control. Remember, left hand is up and down, and right hand is our airspeed, and forward, back, left, right, and so forth. You're going to give me a left hand turn, a gentle left hand turn. Very good. And we're getting a little slow, so we're going to add a little forward cyclic. Just a tiny bit. Perfect. Nice job, man. Still going forward. left? Yeah. Little, little forward. Hotel traffic to follow to the field. Mount short final runway 33. Clear for the option. Crushing clear low approach. Traffic's in sight. Clear low approach. 33. It's your tell. All right. Good job, man. They just cleared us in, so we're just going to continue around left. We're getting a little steep, so maybe bring back the cyclic a little bit. There we go. Continue our left turn. Good job. Right now, it's all you on the sideway. There you go. All right, good job. All right, I have the controls. You have the controls. I have the controls. That was awesome. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah, you did a good job flying the helicopter. So now we're going to do a shallow approach. Shallow approach is used for uh, usually emergency situations where we don't want to be doing a lot of up and down. We just want one approach angle that's you know nice and long, give us plenty of time to deal with, to deal with any issues, especially like uh, when we're turning off hydraulics and it's we're very heavy handed and making a lot of inputs. It can be very difficult to land, and we just want something stable that we can just take all the way to our landing point. So what we're going to do to set up that angle is so we're going to put the white marker near the top third of the screen. And we're just going to maintain that all the way in. It was a standard angle we did the first time with the marker in the middle? Yeah. And, you know, when, when you go do your flight evaluation, your check ride, and the FAA says, you know, you are a helicopter pilot, when you go through that evaluation, there's no specific angle that they're going to hold you to. It's everything's based on your angle because no one can say, oh, that's a shallow angle or that's a steep angle. You have your shallow angle and you have your steep angle. So whenever you fly your normal approach, that will be sort of the benchmark. And from there, anything steeper than that is a steep approach. Anything shallower is a shallow approach, etc. So it's all relative to that. It's all relative, which is one of the cool things about helicopter flies. Is it's really by the seat of your pants. A lot yeah. of it, a lot yeah. of it's very just, you know, you're the pilot, just fly the aircraft sort of thing. I'm a little bit below 300 feet, but that's fine because we want a shallow angle. And I'm a little slow. But I, the important thing to notice is uh, if you see that the white marker in the distance. Tower, Skyhawk, 66220, inbound from the south. 
We're going to start our approach now on the approach, so drop the collective, start working back our airspeed. 66230, roger, enter left base, runway 32, report base. And you can uh, shadow me on all the controls now. And notice that we have a pretty shallow angle. Just controlling my closure with my right hand, and I'm controlling my angle with my left hand to make sure that we're not getting too low or too high. Just a nice shallow approach. The very slow descent. You notice that? Yes. If we can get to ETL, nice and efficient, you know, because right now we're at 16 inches, but we know we're going to pull a whole bunch at the bottom, so let's see if we can stay as efficient as long as possible so we don't have to pull too much power that, in a real world, we may not even have. Last couple of feet here, we're really going to put the brakes on. I was perhaps a little too shallow in my approach. And now we're having to use our left hand to pull in a bunch of power. All very small movements. All right, we're terminated. All right, uh, I have the controls. You have the controls? Have the controls. We're going to air taxi back to the ramp real quick. We're going to get a new camera set up, and then we're going to continue the lesson doing our hover work over there, okay? Very good. All right. And uh, just go ahead and get off the pedals for me real quick. O off the pedals. Oh, thank you, sir. Tower 8 your hotel. Uh, request air taxi to the ramp. 8 your hotel air taxi is approved in the uh, remain of three. This freak air taxi hates your dog. So the plan is I'm going to land, I'm going to put the frictions on, and you're going to guard the controls while I get out and get the camera, okay? Very good. You don't have to do anything, just uh, literally don't do anything. Golden <laughs> <laughs> runway 32, clear for the option. Runway 32, clear for the option. You can't practice while you're out? What's that? I can't practice while you're well, out. Well, you could. You could do anything once, right? Yeah, well, well don't worry. <laughs> you could do something for the first time and the last time all at once. Yeah, exactly. All right. Go ahead and uh, spin us into the wind here. The touchdown is exactly at like the pickup. It's uh, just a reverse. So we smoothly come down until we're light on the skids, and then we push the collective down sort of abruptly to put some weight. Whoop. And now it's down. All right, so frictions go on. So put the collective friction on. Everything's neutral. Pedals are neutral. Cyclic's neutral. Collective is neutral. All right. And literally, all you're going to do is you're just going to guard the controls and make sure that nothing happens, that we don't pop up or anything like that. Okay? Very good. You can go ahead and put your hand on the cyclic and your left hand on the collective and make sure that it doesn't pop up on you. If you feel like it's coming up, just push down with all your mind. All right? This hand keeps us on the ground. And I want your feet on the pedals. You're just going to keep them centered up. Doing a great job. Yeah, I think that GoPro 
bird has got cooked in the sun. That's possible too, they get hot. Did you hear what he just said on the radio? I, I did. He's a, he's a Skyhawk, so he's a, like a little Cessna. And he said he called a go around. He's off the right side there. Make left traffic report midfield. That's a really good decision. If he didn't like his landing, he was unhappy with the way it was looking. He called his go around and let them know, and he just comes back and gets so he's the making truck. another approach. Yeah, some people get very like egotistic and like, oh, I can I can grease every landing and I never mess up and whatever. And that sort of attitude is dangerous in aviation. That, that could be dangerous. You right? need to be humble. You know, you need to say, hey, you know what? That wasn't the best looking angle. That wasn't the best looking approach. Let's try it again. I'm the, I'm the first person to call him, and I'm the first person to call him myself as well. A good practice, I'm certain. Yeah. Well, it's kept me alive this far. Yeah, right. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and get the frictions off. Frictions off. Yep. You're still on the controls. Cool. All right. So we got a good camera now. Uh, looks like a good battery, and it's running. And I have the controls. You have the controls. Tower 448 Sierra Hotel, uh, air taxi to the fire training area. 448 Sierra Hotel, air taxi to the fire training area directly. Air taxi direct, 8 Hotel. Oh. All right, so a little left pedal, a little power. Okie doke, off we go. So when I ask for air taxi, it's different than hover taxi. Any uh, any guesses on what the distinction is? Uh, you're crossing the runway? Yeah, that's one distinction. So a regular hover taxi is just like what an airplane does. They'll tell you taxi to echo taxiway, then alpha, then the runway, then cross, then do this, blah, blah, blah. Air taxi is like, they're going to give you direct, like it's like a takeoff and a landing there. You just go. You just go. And that's one of the cool things about helicopters is they can give us air taxi and we just literally go straight, straight to where you Yeah, yeah. Now, your destination. We have one controller here who doesn't really understand helicopters and he just, he's always, like he'll give me ground taxi and I'm like, dude, I, I can go direct. Like, I can save you time and get out of the way of air air uh, aircraft that you're holding for me. <laughs> like, I can just clear me out. But uh, he's still learning that, that stuff. Experienced guy, he just doesn't really know helicopters that well. All right, so now we're going to practice some hover work. So we're going to do one control at a time, just like we did in the air. All right. Uh, we're going to use for reference here. Let's make sure we're turning to the wind. Yeah, this looks like the wind. All right. So we'll just kind of use these lanes here that where we're sort of pointed down these okay. grooves in the grass. Now, first thing, I want you to look outside your window. What do you see on the ground? I see uh, um, well, I see air. <laughs> you see air? Yeah. Turbulence. Yeah. What? Why is it doing that? Why is the grass being turbulent like that? Uh, the the uh, draft. The what? Draft from the uh, from rotating. Yep. From the rotors. Yep. The downwash. The rotor wash. What do you see out front of you? Uh, no downdraft. No downdraft. Why is that? Uh, because the rotors are pitched. Okay. That's or the a, disc is that's, pitched. That's a good guess. But I'm actually pretty level right now because we're in a stable hover. Calling tower, say again. So, what else could be pushing the, 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 the rotor wash back the, there? Oh, the wind. Ah, Proceed the wind. The ramp the so, ramp. we're pretty close to ETL right now. We're not even moving. That's something to think about. We talked about an effective translational lift or translational lift. As we move into the wind, the wind pushes our rotor wash clear of us. So we're actually almost in ETL right now. We're not even moving. So yeah. you can use that to your advantage. And that's one of the one of the markers of the wind direction that I, I looked at. And I was like, you know, where's the wind coming from? I could I could feel it in the pedals. The aircraft wanted to kind of weather vane into the wind, but I could also look outside my window. So if we do a pedal turn, we take a tailwind. So right turn, nose is clear right, tail is clear left. Now it's like the exact opposite situation, right? Yep. We've got a bunch of wind in front of us. So we would, in order to get clean air over our rotor system and get into effective translational lift, we would need to clear all the way across that downdraft there. It literally shows you 
where you need, where to, go you need to be in order to get clear, clear of it. Yeah. Of course, it's still chasing you, so it's sort of an accelerative Beautiful. profile. Um, makes sense. Cool. All right, so now we're going to turn back into the wind. You can shadow me on the, on the, uh, on the pedals. Right. So I'm going to do a light, uh, left turn, and I'm going to clear my nose and my tail. We're clear. And as we start to turn into the wind, the aircraft is going to want to snap into position. So we're going to add some right pedal to slow that down. There we go. Very controlled, OK? Awesome. Good. Now I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you do a pedal turn. All right, so you have the pedals. OK. And, and, I want, and I want you to give us just a left 360. Very, very slow and methodical. Left 360. Nice and slow. Nice and slow. Keep going, keep going. Now the reason we need a little more on this side is because the wind is pushing against that tail rotor. Did you notice that? Yes. Yeah, I feel it. Nice and slow. Now it's going to snap, so right pedal, right pedal, right pedal. Not too much, not too much. There we go. Keep it going. There you go. And what that is, is that's the wind. Good job, good job. Small movements, small movements. Perfect, man. Good job. Little left pedal. Little left pedal. There we go. Yeah, you center us up and a little more left pedal, just a tad. We're talking millimeters at a time here. Nice. All right, cool. So let go of the pedals. All right, so it's a little slight right pedal. You almost had us trimmed up. That was really good. We're just going to center us up here. So yeah, it was, that, it was that wind at the last moment there that kind of threw us it off. It did throw us off, Because yeah. it wanted to pull. It's sort of like sucking the, the aircraft this way. Because the aircraft has all that aerodynamic paneling in the back, the, uh, the shape of the boom, the horizontal stabilizer, the vertical stabilizer. All that stuff is uh, giving us profile drag which remember at slow speeds wants to help us out. At high speeds, not so much, but at slow speeds wants to help us out. So the wind is sort of like making it almost like putting wind into our sail a little bit, sort of swinging us around. And we just have to moderate how much pedal we use each way. All right, good. How much power are we using right now? I was just looking at that, it's uh, 23. Good. All right, so we're gonna go into an OGE hover and you're gonna be in charge of the collective, all right? Yep. I also want you to shadow me on the pedals, but don't don't make any inputs. I just want you to feel that as we pull up on that collective, we're going to need a little bit of left pedal. In fact, you know what? Disregard. Why don't you take your feet off the pedals? Okay. I want you to see what happens. I'm not going to make any pedal inputs. I'm just going to pull, or we're going to pull up on the collective together, and you'll see what happens to uh, our nose of the aircraft. I also want you to see what happens to our power. So we're 23 inches now. And I want you to add, just we're going to do half inch at a time. Add some power. All right. Now I'm not making any corrections. The nose wants to swing to the right. Now I'm, I got to correct for that, right? So what that is, that's torque. We're increasing torque. There you go. Nice OG hover. That's eh, about 80 feet up, I'd say. All right, you can stop our climb. So just push down a little bit, just level us off with the collective. Push down a little bit more. There we go. Perfect. All right, I have the controls. You have the controls. Oh, controls. Good job. So, how much power are we using? Uh, we're back down to 22 and a half. Yeah. So interesting. So we thought the reverse was going to happen. We thought we we're going to have to use more power to be in an OG hover, and that's what aerodynamically should happen. But we're not. We're actually using less power in the OG hover. The reason is because the winds above the tree line are helping us fly. That's what I was wondering. Good. Yeah, and, you, and actually I'm, I'm working harder to keep us hovering because the winds are sort of pushing me around a little bit. Yep. So good. All right, so let's go ahead and get, get back down to the ground. You've got the collective with me. Go ahead and push us down just a little bit. We're doing half inch at a time, just very slow. You can actually pull some back in. Yeah. Once we start down, you don't have to push it down anymore. It just sort of goes down on its own. See how we're like a leaf on the wind is sort of coming down? Yep. And the last couple of feet, we may not even need to pull any collective because we're going to get in that ground cushion that's going to help us float. In fact, I think we're getting into it here because we're just sort of not going any further down. <laughs> there we go. There's a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we're close to the ground now. But we don't even have that add power. This thing is just sort of hovering above the ground on its own. So that's good. All right. Um, 
So you you know you understand now to go up we go up with the collective and down we go down with the collective. The pedals we're controlling where the nose is pointed. Correct. All right. So you have the pedals. I have the pedals. And just keep our nose pointed right down this lane. And remember, I gave you the aircraft pretty trimmed up, so really you don't have to make too many inputs. It's a very normal student tendency when. You know, we feel the need to make a change, but actually, you probably don't need to make too many changes. This is really good. Like a tower from five, three, seven, really nine, good, man. Nice, smooth, deliberate inputs. It's like you know the nose. Five, three, seven, nine, nine, alpha, I think tower. You know the you know the nose is moving to the right, so you're going to correct for it by like to pushing to the left. Right it's right really good. Three, two, I've got it on. Seven Niner Alpha Verify, you said you're north of the field? North of the field, yes. So I should be set up for right base for 3 2. And really, Niner all you Alpha have to do is once you right find that spot, you can just sort of leave it. You, just you really don't have to, to fight it. Right yeah, don't to fight to yourself, you know? Right base if possible to save time. Alright, I have the pedals. You have the pedals. I have all the Niner controls. Alpha you have Roger, controls. You can enter right base, runway 3 2. Usa, shake it out. Take a breath. Right? You're doing good. Uh, so I'm just going to set you up here a little bit. It is a little squirrely. I agree. Yeah. So you're doing you're doing really good. Okay. So we got time for just a little bit more work. I'm going to give you one more pattern so we can get some camera flying of us, uh, camera shots of us flying around. And then we're going to call it a day. Okay. I want you to come on the cyclic Perfect. with me. Okay. Gently. And in order to stay in one spot, we're providing Airport inputs to counteract Airport any Airport undesired motion. So if the aircraft starts to slide one way, we're just going to counteract. And I happen to know how this aircraft flies, so I can sort of anticipate it. But as you learn, it becomes, it's sort of reactionary at first. So we're going to slide back a little bit, so I got us cleared back. Just a little aft cyclic to slide back. Not too much. Not too much. Okay. Millimeters. Airport one, proceed runway three two. Report off. Not too much. It's pretty fast. We want to go for more of like a walking pace, if that makes sense. This right here, this is the hardest thing we do all day in helicopter, is all the hover work. Just hold it, yeah. Yeah, just holding it in place. <laughs> there you go. All right, good. So now we're going to do some forward sliding. It's just, you're going to add a little bit of like one or two millimeters of forward, and then keep it centered and see if, what that gets us. Bring it back. There you go. I have the controls. You have the controls. I have the controls. Tell you what, let's slide over a little bit further down. I'm just going to set us up so we have some more room to, to play in. Tail is clear, nose is clear. All right. So you're on the cyclic with me. A little forward cyclic to start our forward slide. We're going to move forward a little bit. A little forward cyclic. A little forward cyclic. There you go. And then you bring it, you bring it back a little bit, back to neutral. Sort of like we're doing a little forward like this. A little gotcha. forward, a little backward. See how it's sort of a moderated slide of walking pace. There you go. A little more forward. Nice job. Dude, that's all you. I have the controls. I have the controls. You have the controls. There you go. Good. How'd that one feel? You had it, but I think you got scared when I let go. I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you, you did good. I think you you intuitively like sort of understand what you need to do, which is really good. Yeah. Uh, there are some people I fly with that it's like you're not you're not trainable, like you're dangerous to fly with. You are very easily the type of person that you know I could see getting into this. Centurion five three seven and Alpha runway three two clear to land. 
I would say your average your average fixed wing pilot doesn't have the dexterity to do what you're doing today, which is that says a lot about you. Well, thank you. Yeah. So I'll tell you what. Let's do let's do one more pattern. We'll okay. get some uh, midair shots for the camera, and then uh, we'll call it a day. Does that sound good? Yeah, it works for me. Okay. I'll stay up as long as you want. Sounds good. Uh, so we're gonna talk to tower, and we're gonna ask for what's called a present position takeoff. That lets us depart from wherever we're at on the airport. It doesn't have to be a runway or a taxiway. I want to ask for uh, right traffic back to 3-3 where we've been landing. What kind of takeoff would you like to do? Normal, uh, max performance, or a marginal power? Uh, max performance. Okay, so we're going to simulate. See that mound of dirt up there? Yep. That's going to be a 50-foot uh, obstacle. We're going to stay, it's like, like, I don't know, a 50-foot tower. And we have to clear it before we can move forward. And you're going to shadow me on the controls. All right, and once we get clear 50 feet, I'll say we're clear forward, and you can start your forward movement, okay? Tower, helicopter 448 Sierra Hotel, request press position takeoff, right closed for low approach to 33. 8 Sierra Hotel, uh, proceed as requested, report right base, runway 33. Proceed as requested, uh, report right base, 33, 8 Sierra Hotel. Okay, so here we go, start, start from our hover, we're gonna pull on some power, coming up, coming up. Yeah, you don't need that much, just enough to get okay, going up. Right in the elevator. All right, we're clear four forward. One. So let's go ahead and add some forward side, but not too much, just a little bit. There we go. There we go. We're going to push through that transverse flow so that we get our airspeed up. There we go. 60 knots. We'll go ahead and start our climb out here. And now we just more or less fly it like a gentle airplane here, a little right cyclic to start a right turn. Awesome. It's all come together. You're keeping the nose and trim with the pedals. You're doing a great job with that. Yeah, airspeed. Good job. 79 Alpha, if able to turn left echo, taxi ramp the echo. Echo to ramp with you, 79 Alpha. That might be more comfortable for you. Little turbies from the hill. Little turbulence. Close in, so I'm going to bid out. Yeah, kind of widen the box a little bit. Not a big deal, but what would happen is we would basically turn the box pattern into a racetrack pattern. Gotcha. <laughs> Not a big problem, though. That's something we do. We actually practice race tracks, tracks once we start working uh, with LZs, you know, landing in fields and things like that. It's easier type of pattern, in my opinion. All right, we'll start our way down. Push down on the collective. Little right turn. Make our radio call. Tower 8 Sierra Hotel is right base to 3-3. 8 Sierra Hotel, runway 3-3, clear for the option. Clear the option, 3-3, 8 Sierra Hotel. 8 Sierra Hotel, correction, you're clear for the low approach, runway 3-3. Clear your low approach, 3-3, 8 Sierra Hotel. Awesome, man. All right, so we're 300 feet, going to stop our descent here. What do you want, normal, shallow, steep approach? Uh, normal. Okay, normal approach. Okay, right turn. Remember to keep your uh, arm on your thigh. There, nice and relaxed. That's better. Nice. Just drive until we get our angle. Start our descent. Collective down. Oh, 
We'll start working our airspeed back a little bit more. Hit the guitar, Cherokee 39 or Zero Kikuski. Forward cyclic because we're going to sort of stall out there. A little forward, little forward. There we go. Cherokee 390 See how it wanted to stop? Yep. We want to keep going down on that verbal so we don't have to pull that power. There, we'll just finish it off here. Cherokee 390 And as we pull into the hover, I'll take the controls. I have the controls. You have the controls. I have the controls. Awesome job. That was fun. You see, I let go of the cyclic on that one too? I didn't notice. I, I took my hand right off and I gave the camera a little wave. That was all you. You did a great job. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so now it's time to head on over. We'll ask for another air taxi. Nose is clear. Tail is clear. Actually, tail, we can come up a little bit more because we don't want to put the tail in the, uh, the dirt. In the weeds, yep. Yeah. Tower 448 Sierra Hotel is terminating. Request air taxi to uh, the ramp. 448 Sierra Hotel, it's air taxi to the ramp this frequency. Air taxi this frequency to hotel. That was awesome. Thank cool. you. Yeah, my pleasure. You got some bonus time there too because of the uh, the camera snap. Too. Well, I appreciate that. <laughs> no worries. You did really great. You're. I think you're the first student I've had where I was able to uh, let them fly the cyclic on their uh, actually fly the whole approach on their first lesson. Your your hover work is all normal stuff too, like the way you were hovering and all the tendencies you had, all normal stuff. That just it just takes time. Just yeah, exactly. Muscle memory. Um, I would say the biggest piece of feedback for you, if you wanted to continue, is probably your next lesson and just reminding yourself to make yeah, smaller inputs, two, smaller one. movements. Because you know exactly what you need to do, like you were making the right corrections, but just uh, it would just the magnitude of them. Yeah. 2201, proceed to Alpha runway uh, and correction, hold short runway 32. Proceeding on uh, Alpha, we'll hold short 32. So what the checklist is going to say is to put the frictions on and uh, roll the throttle off. So go ahead and put the friction on the cyclic for me. Friction's on. Thank you. You can pop your door if you want. It's going to be hot. Twenty two zero one proceed runway three two report off. Twenty two zero one proceeding on the runway. Get the checklist out here momentarily. All right. So we're at the shutdown procedure. So go ahead and uh, read off to me. What are we going to do here? Okay. Uh, collective down. RPM 60 to 70. Okay. RPM 60 to 70. That's set. Okay. Friction on. Yes. Uh, cyclic and pedals neutral. Okay. Cyclic yes. neutral. Pedals are neutral. Uh, CHT drop. Wait a minute. Cyclic and pedals neutral. And then? Oh, friction there on. There we go. And yeah. they're on. Yep. Friction's on. Uh, and then CHT drop. Throttle closed. Okay. So. CHT drop, cylinder head temperature. We're waiting for that needle to come down. down. And for me, good cooling means uh, the needle to the left of the H. All right. Um, so, um, the reason we do this is because, again, these are not your car engines. They're designed for large pressure changes and altitude changes and temperature changes, and we really got to baby them. And if we were to shock cool the engine, if I just ripped off the mixture right now and shut it down, 
we could risk, you know, maybe cracking a cylinder or just damaging yeah, the engine. Damage or something. Yeah, just shock cooling it like that. So we're just gonna we're gonna wait for the normal cooling cycle, and then after a couple minutes, we should be able to turn it right up. Coming down. Yep. Little by little, takes a couple minutes. So, what do you think? Was that fun? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, you may get me again. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I, I'll take it. Um, yeah. I, like I said, we kind of debriefed a lot of that stuff while we were flying it. Uh, but you had really good tendencies, normal tendencies, and actually, I was impressed with that last pattern. It sort of all came together. Um, the other thing that happens is normal fatigue, especially for a sortie this long. So. We advertise an hour-long discovery flight in practice with all the checklist stuff and whatever usually comes out to about 40 minutes of actual stick time. Um, but today you got a significant amount of uh, flight beyond that. So that is, as we fly, especially in the beginning, it, we get fatigued very easily and um, we don't notice it. Well, know? yeah, a lot of it's mental too. Yep. You know, you're thinking a lot and yeah. it's it's a lot of work. So you're gonna you're gonna get down here and you're gonna be you're gonna be pushed. I'm gonna be drained. Yeah. yeah. Um, and you don't notice until catches up on you. So all that's normal, especially towards the end of the story. Sometimes what I'll do is we'll do hover work at the beginning instead of at the end. We'll switch it up lesson by lesson because uh, that gives you a little bit different perspective. Um, but I thought your mechanics, like you sort of figured it out uh, as we went along. A lot of it's like the aerodynamic stuff that we talked about. It's good to understand, but you don't necessarily need to think about it while you're flying. Some of it, like ETL and whatever, like that is, that, we yeah. need to understand that, but. Yeah, it was good, good stuff. Oh, it was very good. And you're, like I said, you're a very good instructor, and I thank appreciate you. every bit of it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, almost there. Twenty two zero one, we're on moment track. Twenty two zero one, Roger. It's also just fun to just sort of like sit back and enjoy, like check out the views and, you know, when I gave you those breaks, you know, I, I noticed you were sort of just enjoying yourself and that's what it's all about. Helicopters are supposed to be fun. Well, they, yeah, it was fun and the view was spectacular. Oh, yeah. When we do uh, remote work and training to land in landing zones and stuff like that, we'll usually go to the other side of the lake so you'll get all those sites, you'll get to see Taganic and whatever, and it's usually a fun ride. Go out to some fields out there. There's also some good fields north of the uh, airport too. Not hard to find a field around here. No, no. Yeah, if we had auto, we'd have plenty of choices. Yeah. Even in the city, even in Ithaca, like there's, you know, Stewart Park, there's uh, the high school, like all kinds of spots you could pick if you had to. If you had to, right? Yep. Well, most importantly, I didn't break anything. <laughs> yeah. What do you think? Can you see the right portion of the H there on your side? Not quite. Okay. We'll give another minute. I would. All is there on the side of caution, right? Yep. The other thing I'll say is, um, just like when we were, when I was out of my seat earlier, uh, when we are so sort of like idling here on the ground, uh, we always are still looking after our controls because you never know what could happen. You never know when you might need some left, you know, some quick left uh, pedal or guard the controls a little bit. You never know, like. If you have a hydraulic failure, there's some helicopters, this one is not vulnerable to it, but there are some helicopters where the clutch will just pop up as a sort of like a neutral, non-hydraulic, got it, uh, you know, motion, and that has caused accidents, that's caused helicopters to just like pop up off the ground, yeah. like mechan like maintenance guys running the aircraft, like trying to fix things or whatever, and it, they don't know how to fly it, it just pops off the ground, they just, they roll it, so that's happened before, for sure. All right, looks like sufficient cooling to me, so what does the checklist say? Okay, next would be the clutch switch. Oh, wait a minute. You sure? CHT drop, and then CHT drop, and then oh, throttle close. There we go. Yeah. All right, oh, so that's right. You did say these were all. It's all. Yeah, yeah, it's a pain. All right, so go ahead and roll off the throttle for me. So close it. And we're gonna close it all the way. And do yeah, and hold it there. And then clutch switch. Okay. Right. Yep. And then it says to hack the clock. So we're gonna do that. So we'll just catch up here in the checklist. So CHT okay. drop, throttle closed, right. clutch switch disengage. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. You're off. Good. All right, so we're going to wait our 30 seconds, and then we'll get the mixture off. OK. 
Okay, you want to pull it off? Sure. All the way. There you go. Now I'm going to reset the clock, hack it for 30 seconds. Correct. And, and then it's 30 seconds and apply rotor brake. Good. All right, rotor brake is up here. I'll show you how that works. There's some technique to it. It's more art than science, I'll say. <laughs> While we're waiting for that to spin down, you can go ahead and take off your uh, headset, but uh, leave your seatbelt on.